Hello from Media and Technologies, and welcome to our Imaging 101 series, short subject webinars on the fundamentals of imaging in clinical trials. In this session, Imaging in Oncology Trials, you will learn the basics of medical imaging in oncology clinical trials for each phase. To get started, here's an overview of the drug development process from different stages and the purpose of each stage. Basic research has a goal of target identification. Discovery lead optimization has a goal to identify the molecule or prototype to interact with the target. In preclinical studies, the goal is to obtain a proof of principle and or to understand the mechanisms of actions. All of these trials are conducted with animals as the test subjects. All other phases after preclinical are conducted in humans. FIM studies, first in man. The goal with phase one is to understand the dosage, pharmacodynamics, safety, proof of concept. Phase two is efficacy and safety. Phase three looks at efficacy and safety with a bigger group of patients and lead to a regulatory submission. Phase four is real world use and additional safety if required by the regulatory agencies. To help lay the foundation, here's a list of common terms and acronyms used in clinical trials. Randomized is when each patient's treatment assignment is left to chance. Controlled is when the treatment group receiving the drug is compared to a group given either an active control or a placebo. Active control is an established drug and is also known as an active comparator. A placebo can be a sugar pill and is called a negative control. Double-blinded means researchers, patients, and imaging readers are unaware of the patient's treatment group throughout the evaluation period. Open label is a study in which there is no blinding. Participants and researchers are aware of the treatment being given, and there is no placebo group. IND stands for Investigational New Drug, and NDA stands for New Drug Application. Setting up the design for the oncology clinical trial is critical. The primary endpoint in most oncology trials is patient survival. Overall survival, or OS, is a clinical endpoint and considered gold standard. However, it is not always practical due to the need for high patient numbers and long required time. Progression-free survival, or PFS, measures time from treatment initiation to beginning of disease progression. It is the most commonly used oncology endpoint. Another important endpoint is Objective Response Rate, or ORR. It measures the proportion of patients with a reduction in tumor burden by a predefined amount. Disease evolution is defined according to the chosen response criteria. The most widely used response criteria for solid tumors is RESIST, and now the latest RESIST 1.1, which assesses tumor size by CT or MRI modalities. Tumor growth means tumor progression, and tumor shrinkage means response to treatment. RESIST 1.1 is used to assess tumor size and to classify patients from complete response to progressive disease. Depending on the progression and evolution of the tumor, tumor response is categorized as follows. CR equals complete response. PR equals partial response. SD equals stable disease. PD equals progressive disease. Immunotherapy treatments are assessed using specific response criteria. I resist, IRRC, and IR resist. With immunotherapy treatments, tumors typically exhibit a delayed response and may enlarge prior to disease stabilization. This new criteria takes into account this different behavior of tumor burden. Tumor growth does not automatically mean disease progression category for this type therapy. Imaging is performed again after 8 to 12 weeks to confirm response. Here's an overview of the clinical trial process with clinical trial phases. Clinical trials attempt to answer the following questions. Is the drug safe? Can we trace the drug inside the body? Is there any effect of the drug in the body? Is the drug clinically effective on the disease? How should the drug best be administered? Subjects can be laboratory and animal for studies and testing. There are healthy volunteers for phase one. There are more volunteers for Phase 2, and there are 1,000 to 2,000 patient volunteers in Phase 3. The purpose of each phase is different. We see preclinical testing is about safety and biological activity. 
Phase 1 to 3 are about safety, dosage, efficacy, to verify effectiveness and side effects. The average time can be very long from 1 to 6 years preclinical testing, about 1.8 years in Phase 1, 2.1 years in Phase 2, and 2.5 years in Phase 3. After the Phase 2, there is a filing for the compound to be registered. The probability of moving to a next phase can be drastically low. Preclinical testing involves animal and laboratory studies. Is the drug effective in living organisms? Is the compound biologically active? What levels of drug are assimilated or not? How fast? At the conclusion of preclinical testing, an Investigational New Drug Application, or IND, must be filed with the regulatory agency, then the First in Man, or FIM, studies. Phase 1 lasts 1 to 2 years and evaluates drug safety and a safe dosing range. Clinical efficacy is generally limited to establishing proof of principle. Sometimes, Phase 1 is divided into 1A and 1B. Phase 1A studies are usually performed on healthy volunteers, and Phase 1B is on patients with cancer. Tumor size can also be used as a safety parameter, as any new drug that results in tumor growth will not proceed through the clinical trial process. Pharmacokinetic, or PK, and pharmacodynamic, or PD, data is collected. PK and PD gives the evaluation and quantification of what the body does to a drug over time, tested at many doses, absorption, distribution, metabolism, and elimination. Imaging is used to evaluate the extent of cancer using CT or MRI, identify patient populations most likely to respond to treatment, assess PK using PET, test drug safety, for example, does the drug cause kidney or liver damage using MRI, make go-no-go -no -go decisions on whether or not to proceed in clinical testing and to test novel imaging endpoints. In Phase 2, the drug is given to a larger group of patients who have cancer to answer the questions, does the drug work in the disease population? At what dose is the drug effective? The drug is tested at several doses using placebo-controlled or active comparator design to determine the optimal dose to carry into Phase 3 studies. Imaging in Phase 2 is used to Detect early changes to pathophysiology as it relates to efficacy or safety. Stratify patients into treatment groups. Identify patient populations most likely to respond. Evaluate imaging biomarkers. And to make go-no-go -no -go decisions regarding the move to Phase 3. Phase 3 is meant to confirm efficacy results in a larger population to determine clinically meaningful drug benefit and requires the greatest amount of time financial resources, and strategic planning. It answers the question, is the drug working and safe? It is important to identify adverse events and establish a benefit-to-risk ratio, or BRR, for the patient. BRR influences the decision to approve the drug for first-line, second-line, or salvage therapy. BRR must be comparable or better than current therapies in order to gain first-line treatment status. After Phase 3 testing, a new drug application, or NDA, is filed with the regulatory agency. The NDA contains all data from preclinical and Phase 1 through 3 studies. An NDA can be thousands of pages long and may require as long as 1 to 2 years to be reviewed by the regulatory agency. Imaging in Phase 3 determines disease progression as an indicator of clinical benefit. It also measures changes in tumor size after treatment compared to baseline using CT or MRI for solid tumors and can include measuring glucose metabolism by PET or CT, for example, for lymphoma. Imaging is also used to measure disease progression using response criteria, which are specific to the type of tumor and or drug class. Phase 4. After review and approval of the NDA by a regulatory agency such as the FDA, Phase 4 post-marketing studies are initiated. These are also called post-marketing surveillance. Phase 4 studies are conducted after the drug has already been approved by the regulatory agency to confirm safety and efficacy with long-term use. These studies collect additional information for patients and healthcare providers that was not generated in Phase 3 trials. Phase 4 studies must use current prescribing instructions 
and regulatory agencies can make approval contingent upon them. They are also used to study specific populations, monitor a long-term safety perimeter, to investigate a new efficacy endpoint, or to explore new indications. Imaging is often used to further assess or confirm efficacy and safety. This concludes our quick tour of imaging in oncology clinical trials. We hope you were able to learn more about how medical images are used in each clinical trial phase. Thank you for joining us for this Imaging 101 class. If you would like to learn more about median technologies or to watch the rest of our Imaging 101 series, please visit www.mediantechnologies.com.